the last journey of a great patriarch. He was buried like any other person until Jesus came or until the dramatic death of Jesus on the cross. Nobody was given such a befitting barrier on the pages of the scriptures like Israel, Jacob, Isaac. Look at verse 10. Then they came to the threshing floor of Ether, which Ether, which is beyond the Jordan. And they mourned there with a great, very solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Eta, they said, this is a deep mourning of the Egyptians. Therefore, its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan to today. So his sons did for him just as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephraim, the Hittite, as property for a burial place. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, look at Joseph. We said Joseph is a type of Jesus, but look at the way he buried his father. They embalm him. They preserve his body for 40 days. 40 days they took. The same 40 days. Moses saw the face of God in fasting. 40 days it ignited rain on the planet Earth. 40 days Elijah fasted. 40 days our Lord Jesus himself fasted and prayed. For 40 days, they preserved the body of Jacob. And they mourned him 70 days. Oh, glory be to God. 70 days. They mourned him unlike any human on the pages of the scriptures. And after the mourning is over, Joseph said to Pharaoh, I need to take the body of my dad to where he has requested that we should bury him. And Pharaoh gave servants, chariots, and horses to carry the dead corpse of a patriarch Jacob to where he wanted to be resurrected. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, when you read things like this in the Bible, what comes to mind? You know, many of us read this story and we just pass it. See how Joseph was executing the promise, the demands of his father to the letter. And they said even the people who were watched by, people who were watching from a distance said, wow. We have never seen such a morning. But beloved, a time is coming. Ours will not be morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. The day Jesus died, the day Jesus died, unlike any death, nobody has died like Jesus. The day Jesus was dying, it was not humans who cried. The clouds billowed. The heaven shook. The elements of the earth Close their eyes. The son said, I cannot behold the death of my creator. So the son said, no, I refuse to shine. So the son asked the clouds, please cover my face. Son, our maker is dying. Our maker is dying. I don't need to shine upon him. The son refused to shine. Somebody said, the son closed his eyes. Darkness covered the earth. The earth shook. The very earth that his blood touched 
begin to shake. They say, no, 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 no. We cannot contain the blood of our maker. Everything sins. Because the creator of the universe is departing his body to enter into the heart of the earth where all the people who have died before him Satan has had them bound and when he said it is over he went down in power deep into the heart of the earth to bring to back bring back to life the souls of all who have died righteous ones who have died before him and the book of Matthew will tell us that the day Jesus resurrected, he came with the righteous one and they were seen in the holy city. What a resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, let's look at how Joseph executed the words of his father. Jesus has given us a promise. The first day, the first matter of the church, when the church was born in the upper room, the first, the first Christian, the first believer that was martyred, that died, Stephen, Bible said, listen, let's read. You see, there is something about the righteous. The Bible said, the psalmist said, precious. Precious are the dead of the righteous. When the righteous man is dying, something happens in heaven. Something happens in heaven. Hallelujah. When somebody becomes a Christian, Jesus told them that heaven rejoices. The whole of heaven, they celebrate in a wise celebration because a soul has taken care. But beloved, I tell you, when the righteous is dying, it is not only the angels that celebrate. But something else happens. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 7. From verse 54. Please, take your Christian life serious. And begin to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because there are people who profess to be Christians. They died in hell. Bible said hell also rejoices. Do you know that? Bible says that hell rejoices when the ungodly, the wicked dies. Hell also celebrates. When a child of God, a Christian, is dying, heaven rejoices. Jesus gets up from his throne and the trumpet begins to blow in heaven to welcome a saint who has triumphed on this earth, who has escaped all that onslaught of Satan. They have escaped everything and they are making it majestically to heaven. Jesus himself, he doesn't send angels. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph didn't sit in Egypt. Remember, the day they were going to bring Jacob to Egypt, just Joseph didn't come. He remained in Egypt. But on this last journey, Joseph himself led the procession to my pearl. Hallelujah. The day you will breathe your last breath, not only angels, hallelujah. Please, many of us, we have forgotten who we are. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you have not understood what it means to be a Christian. So many of us are toying. We are toying. We are just toying with Christianity. We don't understand anything. We just came our life. We said we are born again. And we are just going with the truth. The Bible says precious. Precious in the eyes of God. Are the dead. Of the righteous. I pray the day you breathe your last breath. Not angels. But Jesus himself. Will get up on his feet. To welcome you. Hallelujah. But before that day comes, you better have to make sure you are living for heaven. You are living. You are living for heaven. If you live for hell, 
if you live for hell, if you live for hell, hell will rejoice at your coming. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 7 from verse 54 to 60. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their feet. But he being full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. There was somebody who was upset with me that I said Jesus was standing, he was sitting on the right hand of God. And this, he believed that Jesus is everything. He's the Father, He's everything. And He's the one sitting on the throne. And there is no God sitting on the right and Jesus sitting on anything. Jesus is everything. He's the one sitting on the throne. I said, my brother, read the scriptures carefully. Don't get carried away. Stay in the scriptures. Not once. The scripture tells us that and Jesus went to heaven and sat on the right hand of God power sat on the right hand of the father here we read again when philip when stephen sorry when stephen saw before he will leave his body this is how jesus we christians are so important to him he did not stop them from killing him he could have done it but he did not but this should tell us what the death, what the life of a Christian means to Jesus. Even in death, if he doesn't deliver you in death, he will stand for you. Hallelujah. Amen. He will stand for you. He watched them kill him. He stood up. They thought they were killing him, but it was his procession. Hallelujah. Amen. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stop their ears and ran at him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witness laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stole Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not change. Do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Hallelujah. Say he fell asleep. He fell asleep. Christians don't die. We move out. We vacate our body. Christians don't die. He was telling them, I am seeing the Lord. And the Bible said that they saw his face shown like angel. How, how unbelief, what unbelief can do to people. This is what unbelief, unbelief in the heart unbelief that has crowded the minds of people. This is what unbelief can do. You saw the guy face change like an angel and he's saying I am seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father and yet they closed their ears. They screamed. They said no we don't want to hear this. They rushed at him. They stoned him to death. Why is his face shown? Somebody said, if somebody doesn't want to believe, you can give them a thousand reasons for who they should believe, and they'll still ask for more. But someone who believes, they don't need further proof. Hallelujah. This is what happened. Now, you come to Jesus, and Jesus was telling them, before Jesus went to the cross, he was telling us, how normally when people who are righteous are dying what happens and told us that when Lazarus was dying it wasn't Jesus who stood it wasn't Jesus who came to, for him but angels of God were sent and the angels of God came and carried Lazarus 
to the bosom of Abraham. But when you were righteous, you are breathing your life breath, your last breath. The Lord Himself, Hallelujah. Look at how Jacob was buried. Such a morning that has never. Verse 14. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt. He and his brothers, and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps. Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. Now they are said that they have done evil to their brother. They were afraid. They were scared. Oh, the day that Jesus will appear, the Bible said that then, the earth and all the unbelievers on the earth, they will mourn. Those who have rejected him, those who said Jesus is a myth, the story is not true. He's a prophet. He's that. You know why they say all that? Sin. They love sin. This is a light that's come into the world. People love darkness. Beloved, we are living in time when people love sin. We love ourselves, ourselves. Anything that does not, everything that you put ahead of you, than giving your life wholeheartedly to the things of God, is sin. Sin is the reason why we reserve. Do you think you deserve the kingdom of God? Jesus said the kingdom of God has suffered violent, and the villain take it by force. You know what it means? The villain take it by force. The kingdom of God is not chicken play. It's not just, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Then you are in. Jesus said, enter into it. Chop your legs off. If your legs will hinder you. Beloved, the emphasis Jesus placed on how to enter into the kingdom of God, it is no cheap. We have made the kingdom of God too cheap for our church members. Too cheap for our church members. So they are sitting down and waiting. Bye and bye when the trumpet sound, when the angels, bye and bye. And we're sitting down there. The kingdom of God, you enter into it. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Hallelujah. It's just like athletes running to cross that line. Some of them, they will try to Enter with their hands, some their legs, some will put their Have you seen athletes finishing the race before? The Greek word Jesus did do everything. He used the word agonios. The Greek word agonios. Ask anyone who is a Greek what it means. Strive. You know what is strive? Putting every effort. Agonios. Agonizomia. Jesus said. If your hands, if your hands will hinder you, cut it off. One, one, one into the kingdom of God. We have made the kingdom of God too cheap. So people want to enter into the kingdom of God cheaply. No, 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 no. And brother, look, see how the stones did it. He received those stones to enter into the kingdom of God. You think being stoned is easy? They stoned him until he died. Can you see his face broken? Can you see the blood coming? You see how mean Satan is. Satan hates you so badly. Can you imagine the sin? There was a sin that happened in my country, Ghana, some few years ago. In some part of Ghana, some people stoned a soldier. They stoned him till he died. And why they were stoning him? They were taking videos. The whole country was mad. The same group of soldiers to that village. The soldiers beat every everything that crossed cross in that city, in that village. When they watched how this soldier died, my brother, I wish 
we saw how Stephen died. See how we have made Christianity cheap. And every Tom and Dick and Harry think they can just enter it by just saying, I'm a Christian. What effort are you putting into it? They stone, they tried to stone him out of the kingdom of God. And he took all their stones with his last breath. He said, Father, don't hold this against them. And he vacated our body. He left, entered into the glory. I don't know the kind of Christianity you receive. But this is what the Spirit of God has been teaching me about Christianity. This is why my attitude towards the things of God is different on the streets. This is why I have different spirit approaching the way I do the things of God. They said Joshua and Caleb had different spirit. It is my prayer that this afternoon you will develop a different heart, a different attitude towards the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. When we read about Jacob, they said the people at Atom who were from a distance, when they saw the way the people were mourning, they said, this is a great man. This is a great funeral. In Egypt, Jacob and Israel was seen to his last journey with chariots and horses. Oh, what a contrast. The Bible says that the day Jesus will come for us, he will come with, he will not leave a single angel in heaven. Hallelujah. I say he will not leave a single angel in heaven. The Bible says that the angels of God will come with him. They will be blowing trumpet. The trumpet sound will shake the earth. This time, these people were crying. And even the way, listen, the way they were crying, the Egyptians were crying, it touched the neighboring cities. I said, wow. There is a tribe in Ghana. They are called Ashantis. When they lose somebody who is important, there are people that they pay the money. They pay the money to come and cry. They cry. Brother Charles is here. They pay the money. These people may not know you. They have never seen you before. But the way they would cry. They call them what? Chief mourners. What name do they call them? The, the high mourners. They will cry. Listen, if you go to the funeral, you will think the person who have died is their beloved. But they don't him or her from Adam. <laughs> Professional money. They have been paid to cry so that the people who have come to the funeral will think, oh, look at how they love their grandmother. Look at how they love their brother. They don't love him a bit. They have been paid to cry. And they cry with encomiums. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what is encomium? There are people who can cry and make you cry. Hallelujah. Sometimes they cry and they tell the cry to sing it. Brother Charles, can you do some for us? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The cry, the morning of Israel shook the whole of the area. But when the righteous is dying, the angels do not cry. Hallelujah. Amen. The sin is a procession in heaven. If you think the birth of a, a, a someone into the kingdom of God is more joyful to the angels. You haven't seen anything yet. When the righteous is dying, <laughs> this time our Lord Jesus Himself leads the procession, and the angels will be on tiptoes and begin to blow trumpets. Many years back, one of our elders, uh, our elder is now a Reverend Minister. He had a dream. We were doing about 21 days fast. And he had a dream. In the dream, he dreamed that he, has, he was at the gate of heaven. And they opened the gate for him. And when they opened the gate, he saw angels line up as far as his eyes can see. And they all had trumpet. They were blowing and their trumpet crossed each other like this. And they were blowing the trumpet as he was walking through them said it's a beautiful scene beautiful scene and as he keep on walking on getting closer closer to this big glory his wife woke him up and he said oh Connie 
He mentioned the wife. He said, Oh, my wife. Oh, my wife. You have disturbed me. Why did you wake me up? He said, What do you mean? Why did I wake you up? He said, This is the primary. He said, Listen, we have four children, and you are dying and going. You are not going nowhere. <laughs> he, she brought him back from the realms of heaven. They are living on the earth today. Hallelujah. But the death of a righteous man is beautiful. I pray, you see, there is a prophet in the Bible. His name is Balak. 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 Who was, who was hired and paid to curse Israel. And one of the statements he made, he said, oh, that I would die like these people. He wanted to die like them. But he didn't die like them. Beloved, wishing alone to die like a righteous and enter into the kingdom of God is not enough. You can wish all you want to. He said, oh, that I would die like them. His last journey was beautiful. But may your last journey be more beautiful than Jacob. Hallelujah. Amen. May our last journey and if in case Jesus comes in our time, oh, listen, I would love to see the rapture. I would love to see the rapture. I would love to see the rapture in my physical body. So many men of God had wanted to see the rapture. They didn't want to die because we want to see how glorious, how Elijah took off from the earth. We want to experience how our Lord Jesus Christ himself took off and defy the laws of gravity. I would love to see rapture with my eyes. What a beautiful day it will be. What a beautiful. The earth will be looking on. Today they are rejecting us. But that day they will be looking on as we take off. Would you be left behind? Ask yourself. Analyze yourself. Even if you die, would you be left behind? They said every Tom, Dick, and Harry, all the everything in Goshen, except their animals and children, because they are going to lay a pit track to rest. The day our Lord Jesus will come for us. I'm giving you contrast of these two. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 17. Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and their sins, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of Israel. You see, something will wake this word up. One of these days, something will wake this word up. The same way Joseph's brothers sent people to go and beg Joseph, one day the world will beg for Jesus. Please, we thought, people will say, we thought it was a story. We thought it was not true. We thought you were a prophet. We thought you were that. Please forgive us. But it will be too late. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, these are some of the things that motivates me to go to the street. And when they are talking nonsense, I look at their face. And like the Lord, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they, they don't know what they are doing. Forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they are doing. Last week, I looked at one of the police. I said, sir. You don't even know what you are doing. They have called you to come and stop us. Just like the soldiers who crucified Jesus. They were giving instruction to crucify him. And they don't know what they were doing. When they were gambling right at the foot of the cross, Jesus said, you don't know what you are doing. Father, forgive them. Only one of them said of a truth, this is the son of the living God. Hallelujah. But the others didn't see and even those who went to the tomb after they saw the resurrection, extra biblical story says only one of them turned to God. They named him Marcus. In the story of Maswell Lucado on the resurrection of Jesus, he wrote that one of the soldiers who were at the tomb saw the resurrection and he, he became Christian. Hallelujah. I don't know what will wake you up to really, really understand what this Christian journey is about. Maybe the church you have been in, they have told you story, heavenly story so much, material things so much, that you have lost track of what we are saying. Listen, 
Once you are in this world, there are only two destinations. Wishing to go to heaven alone, it's not enough. It's not a wish. They will beg. This time, Joseph forgave his brothers. By the time is coming, the world will beg Jesus. By the time of salvation is over. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that he's still forgiving people, take the advantage. Hallelujah. Amen. Please let me finish the story. Verse 18. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said unto them, Do not be afraid, for I am for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Hallelujah. When they were killing Jesus, they meant to terminate his life. They mean to stop him. But God did it that way. So that through his death, many will come. And many will be saved. And that's exactly what has happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever they might be doing for you, they meant it for evil. But may God turn it around for your good. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them. And spoke kindly to them. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. Then children of Maka, the son of Manasseh. It means he saw his grandchildren. Were also brought up on Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am dying. But God will surely visit you. And bring you out of this land to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. Listen, one of these days I will preach on, take my bones with you. But today that's not what I'm talking about. Take my bones with you. Hallelujah. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. The last story of Joseph and his father in Egypt. What a story. Beloved, we have come a long way. You must well go to our YouTube account, Mana Mission Church UK, one word, and go to the beginning and start listening. From is this the man that God has blessed? Is this the man, the man that God said he has blessed? We have seen his life from beginning to his burial. Beautiful story. But you think the story is over, it's not over. Next Sunday, we'll begin to do the comparison between the life of Joseph and our Lord Jesus. So, Jesus' life will become a life for you. Many a times when we are preaching Jesus, the world does not understand. Even Christians, many of us, we really don't understand. But we'll put the life of Joseph together with Jesus. And then we see the portraits. That Jesus' life before he came. But I want to wrap it up this afternoon and ask you a question. Before we look at the portrait of Joseph's life to Jesus, you as a Christian, if we put your life down in Jesus' life, can we be a portrait of Jesus? Which part of our life reflects Jesus? I told you every single Petra, every single Petra, the people God used, David, Moses, Abraham, and all those people, there is a part of their life that reflected Jesus before Jesus came. But if there is a generation that life has to reflect Jesus, is we Christians. Christians means Christ-like. When people see us, they should see Jesus. Hallelujah. How much of our lives, how does your life, my life, reflect Jesus? Paul said 
in Galatians, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith and grace, by the one who saved me. When we see you, is there something about you that reflects Jesus? Think about it. Which part of your life, which part of your language, what is it about you that reflects Jesus? If there is nothing about you that reflects Jesus as a Christian, there is something wrong. There is something wrong. It means you are living for yourself. You haven't died yet. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Paul said, now I have become a tent for Jesus. I have become an instrument that Jesus lives through. That's what Christianity means. When we become Christians, Jesus begins to live through us, to work through us. To teach through us. Hallelujah. Amen. The brothers of Joseph thought he would revenge. He said, No, I forgive you. He cried. Beloved, you have heard that some of us really, really pray against our enemies. Die. Die. Please. Please. Jesus never taught us to kill anybody by prayer. Jesus never prayed such a prayer. So if you have been taught to kill your enemies, you are a murderer. And you know murderers, murderers will not enter into the kingdom. I don't know where you are learning this from. Look at Joseph. He had the power to crush his brothers. He said He wept. He said, you did not know what you were doing. You mean I. But I forgive you. He said, I will take care of you till I die. And he took care of all of them till so they died. Jesus said we should pray for those who hate us. Pray for those who are mean against us. Pray for people who wrongly abuse us and hate us. But what do we do? We don't pray for them. We pray against them. I want us to bow down our heads. I've said so many things. I don't know which one you have taken this afternoon. I want you to know that the Bible said we should work out our own salvation with fear and tremble. That on the day that we vacate our body, if Jesus doesn't come in our lifetime, it will be a glorious life. That when we breathe our last breath, we will not go down for going over. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask yourself, which part of your life reflects Jesus daily? Will the Lord stand up for you the day you bring your last breath? Will the Lord himself stand up for you and salute you? Ask yourself, who are you holding a grudge against? Yes, they have offended you. Yes, they mean you to die. Yes, they mean all kinds of bad things to you, for you. Stop praying that killer prayer. Stop praying that killer prayer. Our Lord Jesus said, the prayer he taught us, I don't follow no man's prayer. I follow the patterns prayer of Jesus. I don't buy no book from Nigeria. Preachers who have written some deadly prayers against your enemies. I don't follow their website. I don't listen to them. Because they stay in the Old Testament. The Lord that killeth. The law, Bible said the law killeth. They are still operating under the law. And they are killing and being killed. But the spirit is life. The New Testament life is a spirit life that is life. It doesn't kill. If you have bought a book from anybody teaching you a killer prayer. How to pray dangerous prayer and kill people. Throw it away. It's not of God. It's not everything that sounds good. It's of God. Throw it away. Stop reading that book. Stop praying from that book. Listen to what Jesus said. His words are final. He taught us how to pray. He said, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He didn't say we should pray, Father, kill those who trespass against us. He said, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus never for once pray against his enemy, not for once. Even when they were killing him and they were nasty and they were calling him names and they were piercing his side, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Change your prayer language. Repent. If you have been praying mid hour, midnight hours against your enemy, you are still operating under the law. The law that killeth. You haven't come into the spirit life yet. Stop praying those prayers and pray life for your enemies. The Bible said we should forgive those who abuse us and those who misuse us. Check your prayers. Check your prayers. It may sound good, but it might not be the will of the Father. Stop operating under the law that killed under the Old Testament and come into the real revelation life in the New Testament and live the spirit life, the spirit filled life. Stephen could have asked the Lord, Lord, kill all of them, they are killing me, kill all of them, kill all of them. Look at the big stone they stoned me with, look at that man, he hit my head, Lord, kill him. But why they were mean, screaming, shouting, hitting him hard. He said, Father, forgive them. Don't hold this against them. Oh, that we Christians will read the scriptures, especially the New Testament. Pray, pray. I want you to pray this afternoon. Reverse some of the prayers you have prayed. Reverse them. Reverse if you have prayed those wicked prayers. Who exactly is your enemy? Who exactly is your enemy? Because evil spirits don't die. We don't have power to kill them. Evil spirits are behind all those things, those atrocities. And we don't have power to destroy them. Your prayer doesn't kill one evil spirit. Your prayer doesn't kill a witch. Your prayer doesn't kill a wizard. The spirit behind them, you cannot kill. No matter how wicked prayers you pray. Thank God you said wicked prayers and the wicked shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Check your prayers. You might be practicing witchcraft. You might be practicing charismatic witchcraft. But this afternoon, if you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you will come back to the right. God said we should pray for forgiveness for our enemies. Hallelujah. Pray, pray. Father, forgive all of us. We have prayed certain prayers that we shouldn't pray. We are still living under the Old Testament and quoting Old Testament scriptures and applying them today. When their time was not the same as our time, they were operating under the law before the church was born. We have been born with a seed. We were being born with a spirit. We have been born. Jesus said, you do not know the spirit you have received. The spirit you have received is not for destruction. But we read this and we are still praying death upon people. We have forgotten that we have become murderers. We are not learning of the Lord. We are learning after Moses. We are learning after King David. We are learning after the Old Testament people. We have forgotten they fought a different war. Their war was against physical enemy. Our wars are against spiritual enemies. Different war. Different spirit. Different anointing. We are confused. We don't know who we are. We are missing everything. Lord, forgive us. 
Joseph forgave the brothers. He fed them until he died. He cried. He cried, said Father. I forgive you. You didn't know where you were going. You really, really mean to destroy me. But your meanness put me in the line of God. We need to change something. We need to change the way we pray and study the New Testament properly. Study what Jesus taught and the apostles taught and pray correctly because especially in African culture, most of the prayers we are praying are amiss. It's not in line with the New Testament type of prayer. Jesus said we should go and cast out demons. He didn't say we should kill them. Jesus would have killed the woman at the well. Jesus would have killed the man at the tomb. Jesus would have killed everyone that had demonic spirit. Many years ago, I was praying with a group of people that and people who are demonized, they would tell them to carry blocks and they will be carrying blocks. Oh, oh, what foolishness. We've done some foolish things in the past. Foolishness. We command people who are demonized instead of casting the spirit out, we couldn't cast the spirit out and we'll be punishing them and telling them to carry blocks. Telling someone who is demonized, operating under the demonic spirit influences, you ask them to carry block, it's not the demons you are punishing. Out of lack of knowledge in our zeal, we did certain things that are not in line with the scriptures. But God said the days of ignorance God wins at. But it's now commanding everyone everywhere. Father, we repent. Turn away from our own, own, own lack of knowledge and wickedness. Give us the heart to be able to pray for our enemies. Father, this afternoon I take authority over the powers of darkness. We pray for all those who hate us, who dislike us, People who mean bad for us, people who are wishing us bad, people who nag at us, people who secretly are going behind us and saying things, want to destroy our image, want to destroy our image, lifestyle, want to destroy our lives, want to destroy our works. Father, we forgive them. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Open their eyes, turn them from their wickedness unto righteousness. Because you said anyone who is against us is against you. And you will be against anyone. You have already said you will be against anyone. When Israel was there and Balaam and Balak were trying to kill them, you were fighting their battles, you were stopping, you want Balaam and Balak to stay away from them. Israel didn't know. You fight our battles for us. Whether we pray or we did not pray, you still fight our battles for us. Forgive us and open our eyes. In Jesus' name. The Lord is above. Okay. We have just heard from the man of God, Reverend Ebenezer, and we hope that you have been blessed by the key points from the message. That even in them, God will stand with us and be with us. It's time for the light is brought to you by the faithful friends and family of the man and Christian church sharing the news. As man and machine, we proclaim the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ with Christ.